Hi there, my name is Alex Hansen. I'm the game designer behind Morse, and I'm gonna be showing you how to create your own uh, tactile input to operate the game with. You can use mouse and keyboard to operate the game, but I find it much more satisfying to use um, a telegraph key. Uh, it feels very satisfying and tactile. Um, however, telegraph keys are quite expensive, and uh, before you take the leap on buying one of those, uh, I want to provide you an alternative. So we're gonna be building a uh, games controller out of a pair of nail clippers and uh, a dead mouse. And uh, yeah, that should look something a little bit like this. Um, yeah, just uses some very simple components, no code, um, using existing hardware and a little bit of soldering, and we can get uh, a games controller. Uh, so let's get stuck in. The controller itself, we don't actually need that many bits, uh, and most of them are quite simple objects that you can find around the house. So we've got things like tin foil, uh, we've got a block of wood, um, you know, screw. Uh, some card and some nail clippers uh, and you know all of these should be reasonably easy to find around your house and the ones that might be a little trickier to get a hold of is a soldering iron um, if you are struggling to kind of find a whole one of those maybe talk to your neighbor or uh, see if you can track down a hack space uh, locally because um, they'll I'm sure they'll have access to one you can also get them online for pretty cheap um, and then you've got some uh, solder and then you've got uh, the actual mouse itself and you can see here like this one in my case was busted if we turn it over You've got the little switches that are still functioning, uh, even though this bit's broken. Um, and you can see that I've actually already soldered up several of these, but one of the connectors is busted. So um, yeah, I'm gonna be reapplying that, uh, probably because of my reasonably bad uh, soldering skills. Um, and the only other thing to mention is you'll need some crocodile clips, um, which you can kind of get a hold of pretty easily. Although you can just use um, regular wires, um, but it's, I find it much more easy to, to kind of connect things using uh, crocodile clips. Yeah. So the next step is going to be to trim up our wires. So um, you can see I already chopped them in half. Uh, I'm going to use the nail clipper to uh, just very delicately expose the wires there. So it is a little bit easy with these nail clippers, as you'll know from your nails, to just chop straight through. So you just want to do it relatively delicately um, just to get these uh, tips of wires exposed. There you are. So we've got three nice wires now ready to be tinned and connected. Okay, so the next step, uh, you can hear Morse playing in the background, uh, is I'm going to connect up my uh, busted mouse. You can see the light's on, uh, light's on but no one's home. Uh, and you can see when I push these little buttons, uh, that's working. Uh, so we're going to flip it over. You can see the wires kind of set up on the back. Uh, I'm going to use this little pink testing wire just to check that that connection is definitely working. So you can see that when I tap that, you can hear the sound of the telegraph. Yep, and it's the same for the launch switch. So yeah, it's uh, it's ready to go. We just need to solder it up. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of soldering. Um, I will say in advance that I am not the best solderer in the world, uh, not by a long shot. So uh, let me zoom in on this. So you can see up close how bad of a solderer I am. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to tin the wires. Um, I might just need to trim the end of this solder off. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to put a little dab of solder on the end of this wire here. Uh, I've opened the window to let a little bit, uh, a little bit of uh, fresh air in. And um, yeah, I'm just going to do the same to the other wires. Um, hopefully, my friend from the hack space, Richard, isn't watching. Um, he uh, has an excellent YouTube channel uh, who is much better at soldering than I am and has shown me how to do it. So hopefully he's not looking in disgrace right now at my soldering skills. Um, so yeah, just one more. There we go. So they're all tinned up now. So we can use those to kind of quite easily connect out uh, to, the, um, to the main board. Okay, so now I'm going to apply this to the board. Uh, I always try to get to the routine of cleaning the, uh, the iron after every use. And yeah, just going to apply a little bit of fresh solder to this awful connection I did before. And then uh, I've got them color coded the wires relatively. And uh, yeah, I'll see how this goes. Hopefully this is a better connection than last time, but that's not a guarantee. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, people who are better at soldering will judge me on my skills, uh, and that's fine. Um, 
I think it's one of those things that it's hopefully nice to see someone who doesn't like who is a little bit amateurish doing this so you don't feel too intimidated about the prospect of trying something new and getting stuck in because I don't know I've been doing electronics for about and kind of makeshift hardware for about must be over t 10 years now and it is just really fun I've never had like any professional training um, and yeah it's just I think that's why I need to trimming down where's the nail clippers gone uh, give me a sec um, yeah I don't know I've always, I've always had like just enough information to know be able to kind of know what I'm doing um, and yeah it's just wonderful getting stuck in and just botching stuff together. Um, I find that sometimes people get too hung up on the technology and that sometimes just having a, a nice, simple, um, but janky solution is better than something that is complex and prone to breaking. Um, that's kind of why I've, I've used the, the mouse as a, as a base for this project. And hopefully that means that more people can, um, replicate this project kind of you, rather than having to buy kind of fancy hardware or, or things like that wait am i wiring up the wrong <laughs> uh oh oh no that is the right one okay famous last words <clears throat> come on this is not my proudest moment cool i think that's good So they're all looking relatively secure. Uh, I might just redo this one here because it's looking kind of a bit, a little bit janky. There we are. Sweet. So that's all done now. Um, as I said, for the, for the purposes of the regular controller for mouse, you only need uh, the left and right mouse. But if you want to do like iambic uh, control or the other. Uh, setups like Sideswiper or Semi-Auto, um, you can have uh, these two for the left and right, and then um, this one for launch. Um, and yeah, if, if, you, if you're doing it, you might as well get them all wired up anyway. Okay, so we're going to come back to our little telegraph that we made earlier. We're going to make the um, electronics happen uh, in the little jaws here where the um, kind of connection gets made. But we can't just connect a wire here and here, otherwise it'll just continuously fire. So we need an insulator. And for that, we're going to use a little piece of card um, that we're going to connect inside uh, the jaws of um, our telegraph. And for that, we're just going to use some card. I'm just going to very quickly uh, chop that. Cool. So I've got this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little, make a little loop that's just going to sit under the lip, you can see it just sits under there like that. And you can see that that's kind of raised, but when we tape it down, let's just zoom in a little bit, you can see that that's gonna sit uh, lower, so it's not gonna come into contact with the top jaw. Um, the thing that's important with that is um, if it sits too high, it'll constantly trigger because it'll, it'll connect to the top half and we need there to be a gap. So um, now I'm just going to get a little piece of foil. I've got this little piece of foil here. I'm back. I'm going to fold that. Just get a nice crisp edge. So that's going to, that might be too thick actually, but that's just going to sit inside there. It means that when just zoom in again. Means that when that connects, there's still a little bridge. You can see the gap there. Um, and then, yeah, when you, you push the telegraph, um, it makes the connection, but then when it raises back up, it releases. So we're just going to tape that down real quick. And you should, in theory, be able to um, should be able to tape both the foil and the um, the card down simultaneously. So if I place this here, put that down, and you can kind of wrap that around the wood a little bit, hold that in place, so that's looking good. That might be a little bit too much foil, but I guess we'll find out in a second. You know, again, what's nice with all this is it's just all about, you know, experimenting and 
figuring this stuff out. Um, I really love uh, teaching um, people how to do like really tactile craft-based electronics. So like this is, um, yeah, it's just a real privilege getting to kind of um, bring my two passions together of telegraphy and uh, getting people to build weird games controllers. So that, if we take a look here, you can see that there is still a very small gap just enough that the telegraph is going to function. Um, so yeah, we can give that a quick test. Okay, so before we reintroduce the game, I'm just going to show you whereabouts to connect your wires on here. So you probably want to put the live wire here. So just connect that onto the end of um, the foil. And then for the actual, um, for the earth, uh, what you can do is connect it under the actual bridge of the, um, of the nail clipper. So if you just get it there like that. And um, what's really cute with this is if you take like a regular telegraph key, so I just here's one from earlier, um, you can see that they've got these little dials on them, which are used by telegraphists to like configure it to, to be kind of precise and calibrated to kind of however the user wants to, is kind of most comfortable with. And what's kind of fun with um, connecting this crocodile clip here is that you can kind of give yourself the same kind of feel of calibration here. So you can kind of, because depending on where that crocodile clip is set determines how far down um, the uh, nail clipper can bite. So you can see there, it's it's much harder to press versus here where it's fully loose. Um, yeah, which is, again, it's, it's, it's not very professional, but it kind of, again, gives you that feeling of like, um, of calibrating your, your telegraph in a very primitive form. Uh, so let's get this uh, connected to the computer and see how it goes. Okay, so we're back with Morse. Um, I'm just gonna set the game up again. So instead of a iambic key, this time we're gonna use the straight key. And yeah, I'm just gonna connect this telegraph up now. Moment of truth. So it's plugged in. And then this should function as a telegraph. So now I can enter coordinates and push enter to fire. And we now have a functioning telegraph that we can use to play Morse with. Um, and one thing that I haven't done as part of this tutorial is I've not, um, designed the uh, the launch button the you know you'll notice I'm using enter here and that's specifically because like I want to see what you come up with uh, as a potential input uh, I'm doing a very bad job of multitasking here but um, previously I've used like a little arcade button again you're just dealing with two connections so that works quite nicely um, the other thing to mention as well is that obviously this is um, this is kind of a very improvised format but you can, in theory, use, uh, you know, switch this setup over quite easily to a regular telegraph. So I'll do that now. So in the spirit of weird inputs, uh, I'm actually going to use this telegraph here as my launch button and show you how to wire it up. Um, so um, telegraphs have the same thing I was talking about before. They have a live and an earth. Uh, and in this case, this is wired up to like an audio jack. You can see it's kind of connected up underneath, um, but you can actually just connect these uh, crocodile clips directly to um, the little pins on top and it'll work just fine. So you can see here, um, so if I resume that, you can see that that is firing when I click it. So I've now got a telegraph um, being used as a launch button. Uh, and yeah, I. it's obviously a bit weird, but I just absolutely love coming up with weird combinations of controllers and um, finding ways to subvert ways that we, we interact with technology and interfaces. Um, and I hope that through you kind of experimenting with this stuff, I'll get to see all sorts of really weird uh, games controllers that people come up with. Okay, so here we've got the iambic key wired up, so Venter Morse code with that, and then launch with this. Try and catch this ship. And yeah, you can just kind of mix and match and come up with all sorts of weird combinations and if you end up going down the rabbit hole as I have of procuring lots of telegraphs, oops, uh, you can have all sorts of different calibrations and setups for the game. And you know, obviously, as with the um, nail clipper here, you don't have to stay restricted to just telegraph keys, you can experiment with things like clothes pegs or all sorts of different makeshift setups. That's the video. So thank you so much for watching this. Um, the only thing I was going to mention is that like, this is obviously made of like just regular objects. So when you're done playing Morse, you can kind of just unscrew your 
um, nail clipper and use it for its intended purpose. Um, but also, if you want to keep it together for a little bit longer, um, there are, you know, obviously alternative uses for this. So um, either, you know, finding other games that you could operate using this input, um, coming up with different inputs for other games. So like, can you control shoot for a first person shooter with a, an unusual interface? Um, but the one I'd like to highlight is um, there is another Telegraphist game that will be potentially coming out this year um, that has a demo on Steam called uh, uh, Telegraphist 1920 Beats of War. Um, yeah, it's it's nice to have them as a um, as someone else that's enthousi as, as enthusiastic about telegraphy uh, as I am. And um, yeah, I wish them the best with launch. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited to try using my telegraphs with their uh, game as well. Um, and then the other thing to mention is that uh, once you've once you've played Morse and you've 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 got you know reasonably adept at Morse code, um, it might be worth seeing if you can find a local um, ham radio community. Um, they're all over the world. Um, amateur radio is uh, has has this vast international network, um, but they're always looking for new people to get involved. Um, and yeah, getting to actually transmit Morse code using the skill that you've learned, using an interface that you've built. Um, I think it would be quite a satisfying venture. So um, I'll provide some links in the bottom about how to kind of find local um, ham radio networks. And um, yeah, just thank you again for, for checking out Morse and checking out the project. And uh, I hope you have fun. And feel please feel free to share your creations and um, how you got on uh, trying to control Morse with a authentic uh, telegraph format. Thanks.